Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today, well, I don't have any wine in front of me because instead we're going to be talking with Chef Johnny Stewart. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today I'm with Chef Johnny Stewart. He's got a YouTube channel here. It's Texas, what? Texas, Texas style barbecue Texas style and cuisine. And cuisine. So I'm going to link to it in the description below, and the reason why is because I am here today shooting some collaboration videos, but on top of that, I've been watching the hell out of this channel at home because I'm getting ready for the summer and I want to be grilling outdoors all the time and he makes some amazing food. Thank you. Thank so you. <laughs> today we, uh, we're making some uh, lollipop chicken. Johnson, lollipop chicken, yeah, and sure a, do. And then we're making a tomahawk ribeye. Tomahawk ribeye, that's that's the one. The chicken's yeah. all right, but the, we're waiting on that Yeah, ribeye. the ribeye is the one that it's, we've been waiting for for a long time. It's, it's, it's a big, yeah. Two and a half inches thick, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's great, it's, it's, it's a big thick. one, yeah. Uh, so I, what I wanted to do is, I wanted to take a moment because as you know, I'm big about Texas. I like to go around and review Texas wineries. I like to review Texas wine. And I, Chef Johnny is in the same type of San Antonio YouTubers group I'm in. And we had a chance to begin talking and we figured there's an opportunity for collaboration. But another thing I want to do when I have the opportunity is to also talk, kind of talk about these other Texas YouTubers that are out here and give them a chance to kind of describe themselves to my audience in case you guys might be interested in understanding what he does. So Chef, while I'm pouring, give us a little bit of a rundown on how you got started. Well, I, I tell you what, I actually started because some of my students and I, and, and I teach culinary arts is what I do, uh, were watching some different channels and they were like, dang Chef, you're better than that. You need to start a channel. <laughs> and I agreed. So I kind of started my channel uh, never with a sense of, hey, it's going to get big, hey, it's going to grow, but just for putting my recipes out. And, and you can tell in my early videos, it was about putting recipes out. It wasn't about videoing <laughs> because the videography part of it sucked really bad. So if you go back to my early videos, you're going to go, this guy is terrible. I think everybody starts you know, there on YouTube. You know, every, every, I think everybody <laughs> does, but uh, I, I, all I can say is at least I wasn't trying to do good. I, that wasn't the, the, the case with me, you know, but uh, anyway, so we got started doing that and it took off. People liked the recipes I were putting up and, and I, I had a couple of big channels. My first, my first big shout out came is uh, there's a guy from Mississippi called Smoky Ribs, Russ Jones over there. And I had a hundred subscribers and he used one of my hot sauce recipes for one of his recipes. And he goes, oh, hey, nice. I got this from, you know, Chef Johnny. And so uh, in the next few hours, I jumped a hundred. So I went from hundred <laughs> to 200 in a matter of hours. So, you know, that was quite an exciting jump, you know, to have somebody, but somebody that was a very big channel that I, and at that time he was 30,000 in the 30,000s, you know, and so that was huge to me to be, you know, watch my channel. Yeah. So that, that was cool. And now he's over 150,000. So wow. That's incredible. he's growing tremendously. And you just hit a milestone too, too right? 20,000. We went over 20,000. Hell. I don't know. I'm at twenty thousand five hundred now. So a couple of weeks ago. Who's counting? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, so so what, what, once you get to that point, are you still are you still kind of checking daily to kind of see like did I go? Oh, yeah. Did oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, not, not everybody. I check mine all the time. How much? Man, I only got thirty today. What's the deal? <laughs> you know, where some people are hoping they get thirty in the next you know month or two, but uh, you know it's all it's all um, uh, relative to how you are, you know. People now call me a big channel, but I look at big channels going, gosh, I wish I was a big channel. Yeah. You know, in the in the, in the the big play of everything, I'm still a relatively small channel. Well, and it's, it's interesting because there's always there's always somebody out there who, no matter how large of a channel you are, you're, that you're trying to aspire to get to like their oh, level, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. like you see people like, you might see someone who has like 200,000, you're like, oh, I wanna get there. And that person sees someone who has 2 million is like, Ah, one day I'm gonna get I'm there. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> you know, you know, my my goal is is kind of two hundred thousand in four years. So ten times bigger than I am in four years. It's doable. That's 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 what well, I want to do. Well, and and a lot of people don't think it is doable. And I'm not being I'm not joking here. A, a lot of YouTube, once especially once you 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 establish what your your style is and you establish sort of how you want to approach your channel. Mm -hmm. A lot of it just is starting to grow and then it grows kind of exponentially you'll start seeing like a few months you went from 10 now you're like 15 15 a day or something and then all right. of a sudden now you're like 30 a day a few months later and right. all those people kind of share out and talk about it, you know, it's, it's that snowball yeah. it just it, the snowball effect it gets so much bigger as it grows and, and as you go out and you and you see other people and uh, and you start helping other channels and they help you in return you'll find out 
you know, the YouTube community, the one that we're in, uh, YouTube Cooks, are there, are, are San Antonio, I'm in different groups, but I'm in a YouTube Cooks group, but the one in San Antonio is YouTube Meetups group. And uh, all the guys there are very helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't met anybody yet that's like, no, I won't help you. Uh, I've got channels that are near 300,000. Actually, uh, Cooking with Jack, he's pushing 400,000. And, and Jack has, has uh, done just a, a, some little small things with me. And to say, hey, go check out Chef Johnny. Him and I are both doing the same thing. So, uh, you know, here's a guy at that time at 350,000 subscribers mm -hmm. mentioned me at 10,000, mm -hmm. you know. So that helps, uh, you know, some of the other guys, you know, that are that are pushing that 300 mark that, have, hey, let me help you do this. Or there were some guys early on when I, when I wasn't really concentrating on the quality of trying to do a better video, they were like, you need to do better videos. <laughs> yeah, everybody says that. You know, I know. still get emails daily and I'm like, I, I have, I, I bought all these lighting kits. Everybody told me to buy a lighting kit, so I yeah. bought a lighting kit. And then people were saying, do this, change your audio, did all these things. It, you, 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 could, you could have a production team and right. people are still gonna say, get better. <laughs> well, well, yeah, they could, but <laughs> this, was a, this was a big channel telling me, you could be big. Mm. If you will do X, Y, Z. Oh, so, so it wasn't necessarily. It as, wasn't. As it wasn't. Just, it wasn't one of the trolls on out there <laughs> going, "You're an idiot." No, this was this was a big channel that came in and said, "Hey, if you you have a chance of being big," he says, "You know, you're good in front of the camera. Uh, you have a wealth of knowledge. That you're a chef. You understand cooking and everything." So he encouraged me to, "Hey, take it more seriously," and gotcha. saying, "You could you could do this and you could grow big." And I never imagined growing big when I started it and the things that were going on. So through him saying that, I started, okay, let me see if I can get a better camera. Let me see if I can get better lighting. Mm -hmm. And I started trying to make sure I did that. Things were clear, things were edited better. Uh, where before, if I had it done and the editing wasn't great, I just put it up. Yeah. And now, you know, I go back and I go, no, no, that's that's not good. Either totally record it or I don't, I won't, I won't put up something that I think's yeah. not Good yeah, and, and and I think everybody has to hit that transition because there was there was a time in the beginning where like there are a few videos that I posted and I was like, well, my audio is kind of crackly and this and that, but you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out there anyway. And then like I go back and look at it now and go, why in the hell did I ever release that video? That was oh, yeah. a horrible video. And people will forgive you for a fuzzy picture. They will not forgive you for bad audio. It, yes, yes, yes. They want to be able to hear what you're saying. Exactly. Like yeah. like I mean, and 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 it's and it's funny that you you mentioned that because. A lot of the time, I'm sitting there listening to stuff on YouTube when I'm driving. I'll have it just kind of playing in the background, yes, almost like yes. a podcast. And I, because I want to hear something, or I want to learn something, or get an update from one of my favorite channels that I follow. And oh, and yeah. so and so, I, all the time, like if that audio was bad, I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't even, even though I'm not technically viewing it, they would still not be getting that view because I just would be turned off from it so quickly. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I I watch those, and in fact, there's some lives that I listen to. After the YouTube, uh, the YouTube uh, San Antonio YouTube uh, creators meetup, well, on the way home, there's a how-to guy that has a, a creator fundamentals, Dan over there. And mm -hmm. I can remember when Dan first started off, and I've learned a lot from Dan, but when I'm driving home, his live is going on. Mm. So I turn him on when I get in the truck and drive, you know, it's a 30 mile drive home. So all the way home, I'm listening to what Dan and yeah. his people have to say. Uh, all the way home. So, you know, I do that as a podcast many, many times on, and especially different lives. If I'm driving, I'll listen to them, just have them sitting there running in the in the vehicle so I can hear what they're saying. So I actually wanna, I wanna jump back because you were talking about working with other channels and, and how it's helped you. And when we were initially talking, you said something that was really good, which was people think of YouTube as a competition and not necessarily as a community. So there, there are a lot of people who think, oh, if, if this guy gets big, then I can't get big, or I don't have space. And you had mentioned something about how collaborations, in your opinion, are always a win-win. There's, yeah. like, like, like there's always something for either your viewership to learn or get new exposure to, or it's an opportunity for, for you to kind of help out somebody else in another way. Oh, sure. You know, both. Yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. No, you, you always want, you want to you know, give that hand up because somebody, you know, like Russ, I had 100 subscribers. And Russ used my recipe, uh, and you know, and, and told everybody where he got it from. That I've had other people use my recipes and not tell them where they got it from. <laughs> I have had a few of those out there, and I go, "That's my recipe," you know. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't mind how exactly that yeah. recipe hey, follows. You, my. you, uh, you know, and you put them out there so people can have them. But 
Hey, if you're another channel, you know, at least say, I saw this over at this guy's, yeah. you know, give me, a, give me a little shout out on it. But yeah, you know, Russ, he used it and he, he gave me that shout out. And, you know, and other people reached out to me. Uh, uh, T Roy, T Roy Cooks, you know, mm -hmm. he's over 160,000 now. And, you know, he'll help anybody. He'll, he'll go down and, you know, there's people that have 10 subscribers and they'll go, hey, T Roy left a comment on my. So he reaches out to people. Uh, I've had an opportunity to do some collaboration work with him. We all went up there the other day and uh, in the barbecue community, a big, big name is a guy named Harry Sue, world champion uh, barbecuer. He was on the first couple of seasons of Barbecue Pitmasters. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he came uh, to Texas to cook with YouTube people. And I was able to go do that. And, and Harry's channel is growing leaps and bounds. I mean, he was smaller than me and now he's at 40 something thousand. He's just, because yeah. people know who Harry is. So now that he's getting established, he's going very, very fast. But Harry was that way even, how can I help you? What can I do? How can I show you how to bar? But he's that way about barbecue, of helping everybody barbecue good. But you know, Troy does that. Uh, there's a guy uh, in Houston that's coming over to cook with me, and he's in the six, seven hundreds. We're going to be cooking together uh, in May. There's friendships I have from people really around the world. You know, that uh, Lassie, Lassie came over from Norway, and uh, he, was able to, he was able to cook with some guys out in California. He visited L.A., and he probably saw a half a dozen YouTubers in L.A., but you're right, you know, I can help you grow, you can help me grow. There's no, there's no, if I grow, you can't grow. Yeah. You know, so it's always a help. It's a great community. I've got a lot of friends uh, and people that I call friends that I've never seen face to face. Well, I mean, today's the first day, you know, yeah, we've we, seen we, face we've to face. we've talked a couple of times and we've chatted yeah. back on Facebook a few yeah. times and had a few phone calls. Uh, and... For the first time I saw Troy in person, you know, I drove up to his house in Austin and, and uh, you know, it was like we were old friends. You know, was, we, had, we had communicated and watched each other's videos so much. It was like, you know, like we knew each other. Mm -hmm. And when you see YouTubers have those meetups where they're YouTubers getting together, that's that's what all of them were saying. So you, you had mentioned that, that Harry grew pretty quickly because he kind of had some notoriety. Right. So, so how do you think for people who don't have notoriety, like what are some of the specific things that you've done that you feel like it had, like you grow? Cause, a lot of people don't get past that thousand subscriber mark right. before before they abandon, and you're well above that. So, so how, yeah. how how do you tend to like find like oh this is how I feel like I have an opportunity to grow one, my channel? One one is consistency. You know you you've got to have a you know you know I guess you got to have a topic that somebody's gonna like. But man, you know what? If you like it, chances are there's a whole lot of other people that like it also. I mean, so really, just about anything. But you got to figure out how can I get in front of those people. But uh, you know, so food for me, that's an easy. Everybody likes to eat. So uh, I think I Not had a, a, a good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a good, uh, you know, a good base of what I was doing to start off with. But one is collaborations, working with other people. You know, uh, like I said, you know, cooking with Jack, it wasn't a big collaboration. It was, I had asked him one time about a uh, smoking tube. So they have these, these tubes that you can put wood chips in or you can put wood pellets in and light them and put them in a gas grill. Oh, oh nice. smoke, so it adds, you know, the smoke flavor yeah. in a gas grill. And he said, no, I've never, you know, I've never used one, but he goes, I ought to do it. He goes, you buy one, I'll buy one, and we'll do a review on it. So he was, he was when he used his, he goes, hey, Chef Johnny bought one also. Go check out his review. And I did the same mm -hmm. on mine when I got mine uh, to do. So, you know, and he was at 350000 And so there's people out there that are more than happy to give you a shout out, to help you, to offer you advice. Um, you know, uh, one thing I did start doing is, is go to the how-to channels. People like mm -hmm. Dan over at Creator Fundamentals or Nick McNim, whatever his name is, yeah. I don't know if you know him. And so there's a lot of people out there that give you advice on how to do it. So put out good quality, uh, do the best quality you can. Somebody told me one time, I don't remember who it was, but they said do the first 50 videos as fast as you can. Because it's going to take 50 videos to learn what you're doing. He's <laughs> going to get those out of the way. Or so according to some of my recent feedback, more. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> you know, and I tell people all the time, if you don't have haters, you're not doing exactly. your job. Exactly, yeah. You know, and I do. I get people in there. You know, some of them are rude. Like, hey, you big fat guy. You know, because they, they you know, they like to cuss when they call me that. Uh, I did uh, some some uh, spicy wahio sauce and and taught how to make a to take the chili wahios and, and make it down into a sauce and stuff. And I had a lady get on there and cuss me and tell me why no white boy needed to be cooking like that. So you know, I, <laughs> you know, you get those and and uh, 
and, and some people are about, you don't know what you're doing. You're an idiot. I had one guy tell me, uh, I need to go back. And it's funny because it's one of my bigger videos. It gets a lot of views. I get a lot of compliments on. And his comment was, that's about as clear as a mud finch. You know, go, you need to go back to mowing lawns. You know, and I'm going, okay, I've got 30,000 people have watched this video. You know, I've got, you know, a few hundred. Hey, that's great. You know, uh, close to a thousand thumbs up. And you're, and you're telling me that it made no sense and I should mow lawns, you know? So some people That's are crazy. on there just to be jerks and you gotta realize that. You can't let that, you can't take, you can't take the trolls seriously. You gotta laugh and go, they're idiots and keep going. Uh, if it's someone that's constructively helping you do that, but help help people smaller, reach up, reach down. No channel's too small to do a collaboration with. So so one of the, the things that I've, I've actually seen people talk about is they like to do things like disable the ratings or the comments when they release videos thinking it's going to help them grow. And I, I see a lot of people also posting on certain like Facebook like groups. So I like the San Antonio YouTubers and stuff like that. Some people talk about like, oh, someone left a bad comment or I got like two dislikes and I only, only get yeah. two, li two likes anyway or something. And from my perspective, I've always approached it from a standpoint of someone watched enough of the video to know they didn't like it. And, and, and you have so, to realize a comment is interaction that's exactly. good on YouTube. Yes. Interaction. Well, good. it's also feedback, right? Because right. sometimes, unless they're trolling, obviously. Right. But I mean, if someone says, oh, hey, I didn't like this because of XYZ, or you actually pronounce things wrong, or I was like, one, I suck at languages. I'm going to pronounce everything wrong because I can barely speak English. Yeah. Two, I mean, it's okay, thanks for the feedback. Maybe I can go figure out how to pronounce it correctly, or I can, I, I understand that I screwed up where this region was actually from whenever I was doing my description right. and didn't know any better. So I need to go educate myself. So whenever you get comments like that too, how do you normally kind of process that and turn it into something that you can act on? Well, if they're not cussing me, I leave them, I leave, I leave them there. That's, that's fair. If, they, if, they're, if they're cussing me, I just erase them and get rid of them. No, that's you know, not constructive. If, if, yeah, if they're, hey, you know, um, if it's a bad comment, I'll leave it. Because one, YouTube looks at those, and on your ratings, it's, it's comments, it's thumbs up, and thumbs down. Because thumbs down also shows interaction. Mm -hmm. So the more interaction, the better. So leave those up there, look at it and go, is this guy a jerk or is this serious? Do I need to look at that? And but you, if you if you let those negatives get to you, you're never gonna do your second video and your third video. You know, you're never gonna have that perfect video. So make the best video you can and next time try to make a better one and do it consistently. You always wanna put out consistent material. Figure out a day of the week that's good for you that you can release and if you're going to do, hey, if it's weekly, do it every week at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's going to be, you know, you're not going to grow monthly. You're, it just ain't going to yeah. happen. You know, unless you hit a, hit some kind of viral whatever. But you need to do it at least weekly, and it needs to be consistent. Yes, and, that, and that's actually what I've seen a lot of people say. Not like the, 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 creators, uh, the creators channels that you mentioned that YouTube sponsors themselves. They talk about consistency being the key. People need to know when they can come to your channel to see right. content. It's very, it's, it's, it's a lot of similar kind of like the old, before DVR was around, like, okay, Jeopardy's going to be on it this time at this channel. Like, right. you need to have that same mentality. You need to create a, a routine and program for people to understand. At noon, this channel is going to release a video since it's Wednesday or something. I do, I do everything I can to do that. Uh, it doesn't always happen. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I try my best. Like, last night, I was up late getting a video up because I didn't have a video to come up at 9 o'clock this morning. And so uh, we decided to, my wife and kids were like, hey, let's go to the movies. So we went to the movies last night. We got back at 11 o'clock. So I finished editing, I converted to a movie, and the internet out here is atrocious. <laughs> so you know, it takes hours to actually upload a video. So when I got up this morning, it was uploaded. And, and then you, know, you, you, do your, you do your cards, you do your end card. Um, I have closed captioning now on all my videos. Oh, nice. And I'm going back and trying to put, I'm starting on my better videos, my, my more watched ones, and close, doing closed captioning on those. Um, there's 48 million hearing impaired people in the United States. Mm. That's just the United States that, that could come into my channel. And of course, they can hit the automatic closed captioning, but, but you would not believe. Not yeah. good. And sometimes good. you wouldn't believe the words it says you say. Oh, you know, like, I know. I, Trust I didn't me. say that. There, there, there have been times yeah. where like, I'm, I'm talking about a wine and I'm talking about a region or something and yeah. I go back and look and go, oh no, that's a bad word that I did not say. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, 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 ooh, that is not good. Right. <laughs> so I take time to close caption 
And after I get that done, I was visiting with uh, uh, Joseph from, uh, it's a channel that's all in Spanish. It's, it's a, a lifestyle vlog, uh, Bessie Dressy. And she has over a million. And I was visiting with her oh, husband. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he was, he was, it was neat to meet them, you know. I mean, she's been on for four years. Yeah, so you she think does. she's, four years, I've been on for four years, and she's, you know, at a million point three. And I, yeah, I'm going, big... what, what has she got that I don't have? I'm trying to figure that one out. But uh, he was telling me that once I get them converted in English, I can go back and they'll automatically have the Spanish put on. Oh, there, okay. So that I can get them in Spanish. So, so, so my next thing is going to be once I get all mine done is, is make sure they're done in Spanish. Okay. Also. So are you actually manually closed captioning all your own videos, or are you using a service? No, no, no. What I do is is I take the automatic, the automatic one. So if you go in there and you can edit that one. Yes. So it comes up. You hit edit. And then you just correct the wrong okay. words. Okay. So it doesn't take too long to do it. You just go through the video. You know, and if you've got a 10 minute video, it might take you 20 minutes to do yeah. it. And, and also you straighten out some of the words where they should have went with this group. You know, they get cut okay, off and put in the like wrong place. Yeah. So you just got to move them around sometimes so that they're showing up at the right time. They might, you know, it might be, um, you know, uh, hey, this is a really good claret that I really did like. And then there's a break and it might be, but I did like this one better. Well, sometimes it might be that I really did and likes in the next uh, one. Yeah. So you take that like and you move it over it there. You move it back or the butt might be over yeah. here. So you take it off and move. And sometimes it might be three or four words that you have to move to get lined up with what you're saying where they're in the right place. But also just for hearing impaired, people learning English like closed yes, captioning so yes. they can listen and read at the same time and it helps them in learning that, that, so so it, 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 you bring that up back a long time ago in high school when i actually tried to learn spanish and spent multiple years doing it i didn't learn anything um <laughs> that's exactly what we would do we would we would sit there and we would watch the shows and close caption them in spanish so that way if if someone was speaking quickly or they had an accent from another area that we hadn't heard before like we could understand what they were saying we gotta get meat off the pit. Okay. We got meat. We we'll got. We got Our steak is ready. We gotta get it and do the sear. All right. So we took the <laughs> all the meat off, and as you can see, we also have chicken legs because We've we got did some chicken. Two videos today, like I mentioned, we did the tomahawk ribeye and we did the lollipop chicken legs, as well as just some normal chicken legs. Because what the hell? You're gonna do all the chicken legs, right? That's You're not right. just gonna leave some of them. So, uh, but so let's. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about sort of your channel specifically a little bit so I, I stumbled upon your channel as a result of the san antonio youtubers and one of the things i noticed was one of your top videos is something that seems like it should be so simple anyone should be no should like know how to do it you're right but you're right. it it's it has a ton of views so can right. you talk about that? that you might, right, and it, it just took over my number one spot. It, it, was, <laughs> it was climbing and it finally pushed itself into number one. Um, and what's funny is the video sat there for over a year with 500 views. So in uh, September, it was a year old, had, I don't know, less than, definitely less than a thousand views on it uh, in a year. And it took off in October. And it's how to fry an egg <laughs> over easy and sunny side up. And that egg now has over 200,000 <laughs> 200, views. So it's my top video. My tri-tip uh, steak, a roast, was my best video with my barbecue chicken right behind it, number three. It passed barbecue chicken. And, and now th those are the three videos I have that are over 200,000 views. And number one is how to you, fry you an gotta egg. you got to make some really good eggs to over top. Like, like get past tri-tip. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, you know, <laughs> and, of course, it sat there for a year. You know, so one thing is, is if you have a video that's not doing, don't, don't take down those old videos. You never know when yeah. one might take off or what's going to happen. So it sat there for a year, you know, and at 13 months, it, it took off. And right around November, December, I mean, it, it spiked up huge and got real big. And now it's, it's, it's running 30 to 40,000 views a month the last few months. But before that, I mean, it was just, it was way up there, but it's since, since October, it's gotten over 200,000 views since October. <laughs> so, Phew. you know, and of course there's some channels that that probably sounds small to, but for me, that's, yeah. that, yeah, that's a ton. <laughs> and uh, my best video as far as putting it out and it doing good was my chicken fried steak video. It went out in May 
And I could tell how many he has in it now, but it's in probably my top five videos. So, so you, you expect chicken fried steak to do good. Yeah. I mean, that one I go, I understand chicken fried steak doing well. I understand my barbecue chicken doing well. I understand my tri tip doing, but fried egg, that one. No, just, that's, that's kind I, of out I figured of that one out. Field. But, yeah, but so, so, you, so you brought up the fried chicken thing and you just got a comment. Yeah, I got a pretty rude comment. <laughs> and, uh, uh, um, you know, there's people that don't understand the term chicken fried steak. <laughs> they expect to see chicken. And so, yeah, and, and what we were talking about a while ago, I told the story, I said, normally I leave a comment up unless it's cussing and, you know, somebody cursing me. That one, they were, but I left, I'll leave it up for a little while because I wanted them to read my response of saying, you're right, that's not, not chicken. chicken, it's steak. But the style of cooking is chicken frying. It's that style of cooking. So, yeah, people get on there and, they're, they're haters and when you got haters you know you're I doing mean, well yeah i mean exactly yeah like i said at least at least you know they're watching the content so so what's your favorite video that you've made gosh favorite video um you know and we we've kind of talked about this with my wife here a while back and of course you know, we've done so many since then but uh some of my dutch oven videos i love cooking in a dutch oven so i enjoy that um it that, that those those are always a lot of fun it's it's fun cooking in the cast iron mm -hmm. i love camping so some of my camping videos are always a lot of fun to do i love you know i love doing barbecue i cook barbecue every weekend so i gotta love barbecue but um uh, that's that's i think my dutch oven videos are probably the ones i have my most fun doing is just doing some of those uh, i love seafood Nobody watches oh. my seafood videos. I got, really? My seafood does not do well. I've got a, a few hooks oh, stepped on a dog right there. One <laughs> of <laughs> the dogs is behind me. Um, Wants a chicken leg. That's what I, I, love, I love. I love seafood, and it's probably my favorite food group. So when I do a seafood video, it's for me. It's not for views. Uh, I've got very few that are over 1,000 views. Um, but uh, I just, I love, I love seafood. I enjoy cooking seafood and, and preparing it. But I just don't get a lot of views on seafood. Don't know why. I, that's that's really weird. So, yeah. um, so if you had if you had to choose one video that you wanted everybody to go see right now, besides how to fry an egg, um, what, would, what would that be? Gosh, one video. Um, uh, how to make corn asada in a crock pot. Oh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's uh, oh. it's a uh, it's a good video. The recipe is wonderful. If you want to cook it in a Dutch oven or something at the house, it works too. And I've got insulted on that one. You know, why would you put something like that in a crock pot? But my kids love having corn asada yeah. for breakfast. And so the night before I'd get everything, I'd put it into the crock pot, set it and in the morning, it was ready to go. And it's a wonderful recipe. You know, the video has tons of views and I know there's a ton of people using that recipe. I, I was, it was funny, a young lady that I know here, um, is uh, she commented, hey, Johnny Stewart, I just tried your, you know, your uh, corn asada and it's wonderful. And she had tagged me in it. So, and then nice. I didn't even, I didn't even know she watched my channel. I had no idea she even knew I knew I had a channel. Uh, I knew her husband and they were both from, from Lytle here. And so I knew them as kids growing up and everything like that. Now that they're adults, they're probably mid thirties. Well, other people were commenting on it. And some people were like, who's this? And they go, oh, you've never watched. And other people were commenting. Nice. Hey, you mean you haven't seen his YouTube channel? You gotta go try his corn asada. So I was finding out there were all these people here in Lytle eating my corn asada, <laughs> using my recipe that I didn't even know had, had knew I had a channel. And so it gets spread around a lot. I don't know, it's got 30, 40,000 views on it, but I think it's it's, I, I think it's a wonderful recipe. It's an easy recipe, but that one's good. You know, of course, my barbecue chicken does great, and chicken fried steak are, are some of my big ones. But corn asada in a crock pot's pretty. That's it's easy and it's cool. That's pretty cool. I don't know how you can sleep through the night. <laughs> like, like, like that would drive me insane. Like there have been times my wife and I have done beans overnight. Like yeah. we're gonna, we know we have to get up, go someplace early in the morning, so we're gonna do beans or we'll make stock or something like that, and then. We wake up and it's like our stomachs are bottomed out, and that's just on something like chicken stock or or be, it's right. like like the carne asada. Like I would be in there at midnight just with a spoon, just, just, just with just it's like it's like it's like is this hot enough? Yes, it's cooked well enough. Okay, I'm just gonna eat this thing. But like, it, it does. It's a it's a good recipe. It's a lot of fun, and it, it's it's cool just to know people appreciate it. And I think that's one that I've got a, I've got a lot of viewers off that, a lot of subscribers. 
uh, and and uh, people tend to go, hey, that's a good recipe. So I, I like that one. It's not one of my biggest ones, but it, it's a it's, you know, it's got thirty uh, something thirty yeah. something thousand views. So it's a pretty good it's a pretty good video. So. I, I like it a lot and, and people appreciate the recipe. So I guess that's why I like it. And I love, it's funny, one of the one of the comments on it was, you know you're in Texas when white boys are throwing down good Mexican. <laughs> you know? So, it's not true. you know, you, you get down, so that, that was one of the, so yeah, but I have got some of people insulting me on that one also for using yeah. a crock pot and, and not doing it. But but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, and, and, and ultimately what it comes down to is if, if you're making something good, and you have the ability to share it, you should be sharing it, right? I oh, mean, yeah. like, yeah. like, except for that recipe that you won't the, share well, with yeah, me this, on, Yeah, this the, is it, my, the my barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce. Pretty much Which I'm trying recipe. to reverse engineer here, and it is, I'm, I'm working hard. He knows some it, of the ingredients I know in some it. of the ingredients, and I was able to choose, like, when I guessed it right, he said yes, and when I guessed it wrong, he just didn't say anything. So <laughs> I, I know, like, probably one-tenth of the ingredients that go into that thing. But it, it's, a, it's a good sauce. I do have uh, my jack, if you find my, uh, you know what's funny too is I don't do great on hamburger videos. I love my I love cooking hamburgers. I've got a bunch of hamburger videos, but uh, one of them is a, um, uh, a I think it's a cheeseburger or some kind of hamburger with a uh, Jack Daniel's sauce, oh. and it's Jack Daniel's in coffee barbecue sauce that's on that burger, and that barbecue sauce recipe is on there, and that's that's to die for. That is a fantastic. I mean, you I think you could open up a franchise on that. On that sauce. it's that, that sauce is that good it's a tremendous tremendous barbecue sauce that we did and that that sauce is on there and so, it's a great one so quick story i once tried to make my friend chili i tried to make my friend a jack daniels chili i knew nothing about making chili at the time i was in college and i could barely cook so i realized that my friend might like it more if essentially the base of the chili was jack daniels and not necessarily like hey, tomato or Jack Daniels is, or is like people that. search Jack Daniels recipes. Yeah, well, it was yeah. horrible, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure my friend had a bowl of it and was drunk. So, in if you if if you want to cook with something like that, use his recipe or somebody you know what you're doing. Just don't wing it. I like it's not going to turn. Yeah, out one well. of my, my one of my great <laughs> videos is a lot of people watch is Jack Daniels peach cobbler. Oh, and uh, God, peach I've cobbler. entered it in four cook-offs. It's one three and came in second once. Well, then obviously someone was wrong. Yeah, it's like one time was. somebody was wrong. <laughs> but it, was, it, is a, it is a great recipe. We sell it on our barbecue stand every Sunday. It's our dessert on Sundays. And uh, it's, it's great. Of course, I had a cook-off. I do it in a Dutch oven. And on the, uh, on the channel, it's in a Dutch oven. But uh, one, the, the, the funny story about it is, is one time my son comes up there and he's like, man, Dad, this, this cobbler's got a lot of whiskey in it. I'm like, no, son, just a third of a cup. That's all. And so we go on and... Here in a second, we had sold some, and somebody goes, "Hey, Gum Stewart, there's a lot of." <laughs> goes, I'm Stewart also, but my last yeah. name Stewart, his first name yeah. Stewart. No relation. But, uh, he goes, uh, it, "It's spelled. He's S T U. I'm S T E." So, so I, I do it the right way. He does it the English way. I do it the the white trash Scottish <laughs> way. This, this is where I've got it. But uh, they were like, "Man, a lot of whiskey in that." Like, well, we only put a third of a cup, and I didn't think much about it. And, and so here in a little bit, you know, I thought, my son said it again. So I, thought, I need to, and boy, I tasted it. And sure enough, man, I mean, this was like. Was it three cups instead of a third of a cup? <laughs> so I had always made the cobbler. My wife had just taken over making the cobbler. And she gets up to the stand. I'm like, honey, I go, how much Jack Daniels did you put in that cobbler today? She goes, well, what the recipe calls for. I go, how much did you put? She goes, cup and a half. <laughs> So that day so, uh, we were selling the cobbler and saying, don't open this in the car on the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of Jack Daniels when, in it, to when, say the least. When, when the Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission pulls you over for cobbler, you know you made you're, something You're in right. trouble. But it's, <laughs> oh, a, it's, a, it's a very good, uh. it's a very good. I've got some Jack Daniels, uh, oh, some different Jack Daniels. I've got Jack Daniels and some different recipes. I like cooking with Jack Daniels, so I like drinking Jack Daniels. Yeah. That's my, my, my uh, drink of uh, Jack Daniels Master Distiller which is hard to find. I, I got it at the distillery when we went and visited. And there's one place in San Antonio I know that sells it. So if I'm in there, I'll pick some up. But that's my favorite Jack Daniels. So yeah, that's number seven. I, I, will, I will say I'm a bullet guy. I'm a bullet <laughs> well, guy. I, I've I just, had I bullet like rye. It. Bullet rye is good. And I've drank a the lot of it. The bourbon's good too. Yeah. But I, I do the uh, bullet rye. A friend of mine gave me that. And I, I drink that every once in a while. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm a whiskey kind of yeah. guy. At some point, we need to come. I, I, need, to, I need to bring over my, my, my favorite uh, uh, scotch. You know, I've never been huge on scotch. Uh, 
but it just i've had friends that drank scotch and everyone's big about it but my daughter went to england last spring and she when she was there she went to a little pub by the hotel they were staying at and she goes look i want to take my daddy a bottle of scotch back and you know i'm a college student i can't afford you know hundreds of dollars for a bottle of scotch but what would be a good one so she went in there and, and they told her what to buy so she went and found a place to buy it and she brought me it's called strathlisa or something like that but it's a scotch it's a 12 year old scotch from the oldest distillery in the highlands of scotland oh nice so that's what the people there in england recommended for her to bring back to me and so i i, I drink that one sparingly i'll get a little glass every once so i just it take some skips, sips of that one but it's a it's a good it's a good scotch and I like it pretty well. Plus, nice. she brought it to me from England, so you gotta yeah, like you it. Can't, I mean, you can't complain about that, right? <laughs> no. I mean, there's nothing wrong. So, speaking of bringing bottles back, so your your wife brought out this bottle. It's I don't even know how I'm gonna like. This is gonna be another one of those videos where you guys hate me for mispronouncing stuff. I'm assuming it's Fiche, and it's from Switzerland. So that, that's tell close. us a little bit about this. Well, my wife my wife and daughter went to uh, went to Europe. They spent a month in Europe years ago a few years ago and she brought me back a bunch of bottles of wine now this one says it was made in 2010 so it's been sitting in the bottle i don't think that's when they went they they, they went it was after that so bottle had been sitting over there for a while but she brought me back some from italy she brought me back uh oh from spain so anyways when they were in spain she got me a sherry and so my my sherry story is this i opened up the bottle of sherry didn't want to drink it all at once so I drank some one night, and you know, the next night I would come in and drink a little more trying to spray it because I wanted to get a nice sherry. And she asked the people, hey, what do I get my husband? He wants a nice sherry when they were in Spain. So she brought it back, and, I, and I'm gradually drinking this, thinking I'll drink it, you know, a little bit every night over a week or so and get rid of it. I come in one night to get my sherry, and it's gone. And I'm like, man, did y'all drink my sherry? She goes, no. John and I tried it. We thought it was spoiled, and we threw it out. Oh no! What, what, uh, what kind of sherry was it? Do you you know, I don't even remember now. But they had paid quite a bit for it. And of course, sherry is an alcohol. Um, it's a fortified. It, yeah, it's fortified. Uh, yeah. There's one fortified. So, so port, sherry, masala are all fortified wines. And uh, and what they would do is in the old days, and you probably know this, is that they would add alcohol to the wine to extend the life of it when they had it aboard ship going places the wine would not spoil that's why they put alcohol in it so now of course you don't have to do that anymore but they do it still for the flavor mm -hmm. so yeah the rest of my bottle of sherry got poured down the wine uh, she thought she thought it had spoiled because she was looking yeah. for her nice sweet no, wine no, no that's just kind of how it is <laughs> so, I, I forgot how many countries she brought me bottles of wine back but this is all this was from uh switzerland and i always said i will open this bottle when i had somebody here that appreciated it and uh Stuart showed up Apparently today showed and Libby up. was like, hey, open up that bottle of Swiss <laughs> wine. So here we go. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna see if this is any good or not. Yeah, we'll try it. So here we go. All right, so I your uh, bottle. Open, it, open it up. You're the right. connoisseur here. Let's all right. First of all, screw top plus one. <laughs> Anyone who knows my channel knows I love screw tops. And it definitely has a little bit of an aging characteristic to it. But like you said, it's about nine years old at this point. Yeah. And of course, I don't know how long it aged prior to, to going into the bottle, but... And I'll be honest, color. I'm not an expert in Swiss wine, so I don't know. Smells good. Yeah, it definitely has a nice, almost like a slight, kind of a little bit of a honey. Lemon, a little bit of a red apple. Maybe a touch of like tangerine. Maybe a little bit of peach. You see the you see the legs coming down. Not a whole lot though. Yeah, they're Look not at, very sticky. We're gonna see what happens. Yeah. All right, let's go for the taste. I like it. I just had a bug land in mine. <laughs> bug, well, welcome to like Texas. <laughs> now you know guy, why I don't shoot my wine reviews outside. No, it definitely has. And it's funny though, because I'm getting a lot of, it, it almost feels like it should be a sweet wine with a lot of the flavors. There's like a honey, almost like a mead aspect to it, but it's not sweet at all. It's, it's you, totally you know, dry. And, and you, can, uh, you can pick up, I think, a little bit of dryness in it mm -hmm. um, that, that's in there. So. 
yeah it's it's different it's different because normally when you start when you start getting that kind of dryness you don't get that hey it's kind of sweet yeah but this one i i get i think my wife would drink this one and she likes sweet wine mm -hmm. she's definitely a sweet wine drinker but, yeah she loved this reverse remainder that we had yeah she that did. chicken so this one uh there you can when you when you drink it you know you can the tannins kind of hit your tongue and like they want to dry them out a little bit but there's there's some sweetness to it that's totally totally different so I, I like I said I know nothing about it I know it came from uh, from Switzerland yes yeah, she nice. brought me back some some French wine she bought this one she told me in Lucerne is where of course it's all in other languages yeah, so I don't I know what it's saying like I all all I know is coat right there coat that's 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 the only thing I can I can read on this bottle without people flaming me on it. So but, yeah, a while ago, 12% alcohol by volume. But yeah, she said she bought this one when they were in Lucerne. So this one's been, I think I've drank all it's the quite others. Nice. It, it's, 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 it's borderline tropical. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's I'll quite nice. It. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. Well, there you go. Somebody that could really appreciate it now. Yeah, that's, got opened this is, up. This is quite good. <laughs> and like I said, I don't think I've ever I've ever even seen a bottle of wine from Switzerland at any place that I've been to whenever I'm buying wine. So the, the chance yeah, that she brought she brought back a French wine, she brought back one from Spain, she brought back one from Italy, she brought back this one from Switzerland. Her whole suitcase was stuffed with, <laughs> with wine that's, on the way back. That's that's the way it was. So so a while ago, uh, and I have this video on my channel, a while ago. My wife and I took a anniversary trip to Washington, and we basically went um, and hit British Columbia, Washington, Portland. I literally bought, brought back twelve bottles of wine, and and I had like little like bubble wrap sleeves that they were in, and I I, I did a whole video of like how to put them in the sleeve and put them in the the, the suitcase uh -huh. just the right size, and I had everything that was in my suitcase. This is packed either in my wife's suitcase, my carry-on, or my backpack. And so I'm going through security, and I've got like four pair of underwear <laughs> in my backpack. And, this, and the people who are like scanning my bags are like, what is this? Like, like, what is this guy? And so finally, like, one of the guys started looking at me. I was like, I have a whole backpack full of clothes. All my other stuff is, like, all my other cases, wine. I came from wine country. And then the guy was like, oh, okay. Like, like no problem. Like, like, like we've we seen understand. this before. We understand It was now. the weirdest thing, but... Yeah, so if, you, if you're interested, go look at that as the wine sleeve video on my, on my channel. But uh, just want to say thank you for, for having me out today. Oh, it was, it was amazing great to day. see all the food and try the food, and I'm totally stuffed. <laughs> and, uh, and amazing to get to try this wine as well. So I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and thank you for also working with all the other people out there, giving them advice on how to grow their YouTube channels. Hey, you know, that um, again, <laughs> you, you, you pass it down. You passed down what, what there were people that helped me, and so you helped the person that you know. And the other we talked about it a while ago of helping other channels, but that little channel you help, you never know how big they may be someday. That's you true. know, somebody somebody helped help Bessie, mm -hmm. and in four years, she's at 1.3 million. So somebody helped her right yep. off the bat when she was little, and you, you imagine how she can return the, the favor, you know, to somebody yeah. now. And, and she's that type of, of lady that her and her husband do neat stuff yeah. and they're, they're nice people and you know that they're, they're willing to help other people. And like we said, the community's that way. Yeah. Is, is that, it's a hand up. You always give everybody a hand up. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing is that it's, it's not, you, YouTube itself, if you, if, you, if you have the right mindset, YouTube itself may be a platform, but it's also the community. You have to, yeah. you, engaging with your audience, engaging with the other creators, really building out the content that not only you would want to see, but you know other people want to see. That's and it. so it, you just you just have to really kind of keep working at it and like you said, staying consistent, being willing to engage with everybody and uh, and really finding those opportunities. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine All and Dime. I highly encourage you to subscribe to Chef Johnny Stewart's channel. You're gonna learn a whole bunch about Southern cooking and you're gonna see some really amazing food. And if you're lucky, one day you might get to collab with them and eat that really amazing food. It's good stuff. <laughs> it was, it was, no, it's it amazing stuff. It was fantastic. So anyway, I will see y'all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, uh, find a wine that you haven't tried and try it on your own and pair it with this food. Like I said, it's phenomenal.